Hey, Colin Smith here, and I've got a great tutorial for you this week. I'm going to show you how to design a template that's going to be reusable inside of Photoshop. All right, this week we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to create a magazine style layout inside of Photoshop. But what makes this special is that we're actually going to design it as a reusable template, which means that later on you could come back and you could uh, put new pictures in here, put new text in, and reuse this page over and over again for different images. I think you're really going to love this. And as a bonus, I'm actually going to give you the template so you can play around with it yourself. So let's get started. All right, let's create a reusable template similar to what we see here. I just laid this out in Photoshop and then dropped in some photos so you could see what I was doing. So let's create something like this from scratch right now. I'm just going to choose File, New, and we're going to create a new document. And I'm going to do this one at 14 by 8 and a half. So it's actually going to be kind of like a spread here. Now what I want to do is set up some guides to help the layout. So any designer would know that, that guides are very important. So rather than click and drag these out, in CC there's a new feature. If we go under the View option and we go down to the New Guide Layout, you can see I can actually save uh, different layouts. There's uh, default ones, there's different ones we can grab here, and this is a custom one that I just laid out. So we've got eight columns, we've got nine rows, and you can see I put a little bit of a gutter in between each one of these. And you can change the size of that just by clicking and dragging there, notice that. And we can do all that live. It's really useful. And then what I did too is I gave it a margin. So without the margin, if you put an element, it would rub right up against the edge of the page. Or we'd have to start with them, um, you know, with a big gap like that, which I really don't like. So I created a margin. Now there's a little tip when you're doing the margin, make sure clear existing guides is on. If it's not, you get this. Watch this, it starts to look weird. So if we turn on clear existing guides, it will just set that up nicely for us. All right, so what we've done is we've just given ourselves a top and a bottom, left and right. So we're just going to click OK. And now we're ready to start laying out our design. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to use some shape layers. We're just going to use a rectangle in this case. You could use other shapes if you wanted and drop photos in, but I'm just going to use rectangle because it's pretty um, standard what we're going to do with that. And then what I'm going to do with this rectangle is I'm just going to set this for a gray color. I should maybe go down to that. Oh, that gray's good. And then I'm just going to create one at the top here. I'm just going to click and drag following this guide nicely. And I'm going to create a photo maybe about that big. Obviously, it's not a photo right now. It's just a rectangle. And that's fine. That's great. So let's create another one, maybe a more of a square shape. Let's click and drag down here. And we've created another one. Notice you can see it there. So what I'm going to do is I'd actually like to repeat this. So I just grabbed the Move tool here with the Move tool selected. And as you can see, I'm on a Mac, I'm going to hold down the Option key. If you're on Windows, hold down Alt and then drag out a copy. Now, if you hold down the Shift key when you do that, let me just undo that and do it again. So we hit Option, and now if we hold down Shift, it will constrain its movement. So we can drag these out and notice that these are nicely aligned. See how this grid is really helping us lay it out. So we can do the same thing again. And we can also do the same thing again. So that's just Option, Shift, Drag, and that would be Alt, Shift, Drag on Windows. And then we've just created four blocks and one up the top. And we're going to replace these with photographs whenever we want because this is a reusable template that we're going to reuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around with this one. I want to make this a little bit different. So I'm just going to hit Control T for Free Transform. That would be Command T on Mac. And I'm just going to just change the size of this a little. So I'm just resizing it. I feel better about that kind of a shape there. Nice. All right, so we've created these. Now, the real secret to this is creating smart objects. If we create these as smart objects, then we're going to be able to just replace the content. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and choose convert to smart object on each one of these. And then what it's doing is just basically making this into a reusable template. One more. And uh, one of those I see I made a mistake there. I rasterized the layer. Now, uh, see that? That doesn't matter. We just convert it to Smart Object. It'll still work the same way. Fine. So that's great. So we've got our block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all. I just click the top one, held Shift and sell, click to the bottom. And now I'm just going to hit Control G, Command G on Mac for Group. And then we'll just call these pictures or pics. So all the pictures now are inside this little folder there. 
so we can come back to that later when we're ready to work on the pictures. Excellent, so now we're going to create some text. First thing I'm going to do is go to the type tool, or we can hit the T key to select it, and then I'm just going to click on the top here and click and drag across. I'm going to create a headline, and I'm just going to call this one my big headline, and I'm going to do it all caps, and just double click to select it. And I'm going to change this. I'm using Lato right now, a Lato that's available. Um, you can get that under Adobe Typekit if you're a Creative Cloud subscriber. Otherwise, just jump into Google Fonts. You'll find one very similar to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Let's have a look. We could do black. How does black look? Let's make the size a little bigger. That's not bad. Um, so that's kind of our headline there. And I'm going to create a subhead now. So I'm going to grab my type tool. Now, one of the things that happens a lot when you get close to type, notice if you click, it selects that block. So let me just bring that block up a little bit, give myself a little more space. And I want to click here, but I don't want to select this. So if you hold down the shift key, when you click, it will force it to create a new type box. So we're going to do that and we're going to drag it out here. And we're going to call it my subhead. You can't see it because it's too big. So what we'll do is just drop the size down a little bit. And that'll come in. And we're going to change this from black to maybe a bold. And what are we at? About 22. We could drop this down to maybe a 20. Well, there's, there's no 20 in there, so we just type in 20. And click away. All right, so we've got our headline and our subhead. Now we move that subhead down a little bit. And notice how, once again, I'm just respecting this guide and following it nicely. All right, let's create a block of text. Grab the Type tool. Once again, hold the Shift key to make sure that we can force it to create a text block. And I'm going to go down just about here. I'm not going to get too carried away with this. It's not going to be a huge text-heavy page. So I'm going to go there, and now I want to fill it with some placeholder text. The way to do that is just go to Type, and then go down to Paste Lorem Ipsum. And then we can drop some placeholder text in there. Control A or Command A to select it all. And let's do a little styling. So we're going to go down here. We're going to change this to a maybe a uh, regular. See how that looks. Regular is not bad. Let's drop the size of it down to maybe a 12. 12 is looking good. Let's click here to see the options. And under the options here, we've got a 17 letting, which is actually nice. It's a nice big letting, which is good. I like to have some space between the lines there. It lets it breathe a little bit and makes it appear a little more classy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold the shift key and drag that down because I want a little space there. And I'm going to hit option and duplicate out that text block. So now we've got two of them. So let's hide that. You can see we're getting pretty close to what we want to do now. So maybe some captions. Some captions would be nice. So let's click down here and we're just going to click and drag there down there and we're going to call this one photo caption. And let's style it. I think uh, italic is probably good. Great. Maybe drop it down to a 10. Oops. Not quite like that. Let's do that like that. There we go. There's a 10. And let's just drag that up to make sure we don't get too much space at the bottom there. Um, we could overlap. It wouldn't really matter. But I don't really want to do that. So we've got it there. And I'm just going to hit the Option key and Shift to just copy these out. Just like we did with the... Um, with those other blocks and let's do it again oops did that wrong I'll show you a little trick here if I select both of these together and I hold the option key and shift and drag I can duplicate both of them at the same time and that saves a little bit of time when we're doing that so I've got a lot of text here so why don't I just grab all that text control command G for group and we'll call it text all right so we've got our text in there. We're getting very close to using this. One of the things I'm going to do here is I don't quite like this text block now. I want it to line up with the bottom of the type. I just feel it has a better look and feel by doing that. And uh, we're just going to kind of drop it to there. Great. Now let's do a couple of page elements just to dress it up a little bit. So I'm just going to go down to the background area here. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to grab a maybe a darker gray. And we're just going to do just a couple of decorative elements. So with the rectangle tool, we're going to drag up here. And, you know, maybe we'd put something, you know, like a page title up there or, you know, something like that. And same down here. We can go here. Let's just drag it small. 
And maybe we do something like a page number there. You know, just decorative elements to give it a little bit more something so it doesn't look so so boring. Um, and then why don't we also do that under here, under the subhead. Let's just create a little, little line there. Looking good. All right, so what would this look like if we were to just hide everything? Control H will show you that uh, layout. So I'm looking at that. I want to drag that over just a little bit. And I'm just using the arrow key to kind of nudge that. Let's nudge it up a little bit. And the one thing I really don't like about this is I don't like that color. It feels just a little too, um, little too dark. So what I'm going to do is just go down there and just lighten it up. Notice I just double clicked it and then I could change the color right there with the color picker. Beautiful. Actually, let's go even lighter. Double click and let's make it super light. There we go. Now I'm liking that. Looking good. All right. So what we're going to do now is Control H or Command H to show everything. And we've essentially created our template. So let me just save this. I'm just going to choose File, Save As. I'll drop it on my desktop here and I'm just going to call this Page Template. And um, we'll, we'll call it, a, let's make it a PSD. And I'll save that. So what I'm going to do for you is um, I'll make this available for you. So click in the link underneath and just download this and you can have it and play around with it. Um, so what we're gonna do now, now that we've created our template, is we're gonna populate it. I'm gonna show you how to use it. So I'm just gonna hit the control key or the command key and select my first text box. Now we're into the pics here and what we're gonna do is double click and it's gonna open a new document. This is how smart objects work. So now all I'm gonna do is just place images in here. So I'm just gonna choose to place embed Let's do that. And I'm just going to grab some of my photos. We'll use my aerial photos for this. Some of my aerials that I've done with my uh, quadcopter drone. And I have training videos on that at Photoshop Cafe. And I'm actually in the process of writing a book for Rocky Nook, uh, which will be out around about September, I think. Um, so, okay, we've got that. Let's go here and grab right there. We'll do the sunrise. Look at that. It almost fits. I got lucky there. Let me increase the size of it, hit enter. And now all I'm gonna do is just close that out and ask me to save it, I'll save. And notice what happens is that smart object just replaces it with that picture. Now the reason I'm doing it here, if I was to just replace it here without doing the smart object, or if I click the smart object and I right click and then I choose replace contents, if I do that, it's gonna fill up the whole page and go to the size of the image. So the reason I'm working this way is that way when I open this up, it'll constrain it to that size and it'll make it fit. So um, if you don't understand what I'm saying there, then it means you haven't done it wrong. So don't worry about it. If the sizes get all weird, then just rewind and watch that little bit. So I'm just going to drop some more pictures in here. Same thing here, just control clicking and then double clicking there. And how many of you find that Acrobat is annoying? Let's just uh, quit that so annoying when it's trying to do those updates. Um, let's just choose file and then we're going to place embed it again. And let's grab this one. I'm just double clicking it. I'm hitting shift and option by the way or alt to scale it proportionally from the center. And I'll just hit enter and I'm just going to drag this over so you can see my watermark in there. Um, and we're just going to save that. All right, so two to go. Let's just speed this up a little bit. And let's grab a couple more. Let's grab this one. And you can see I'm just kind of repeating a little bit, but um, it's okay. I've got a little trick I'm going to show you at the end here when I'm done. So I just want to just drop these last two in really quick. And let's grab that last one here. And as you can see, it's starting to take place. Let's place embedded. Da -da 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 -da. Um, I could sing to you, but if I did that, I think you would probably quit the video and, and go do something else. So I won't do that. I'll save you the pain and agony of my singing for now. All right, there we go. Almost done. Boom. Okay, so I'm going to close there, hit save, and we've got a layout. So let me hit Command or Control H to hide everything. And uh, if you want to see a different color background here, let's do it against a medium gray or even a light gray. And you can kind of see that's my layout there. So all I would want to do here is just go in here. I would select it. I could replace my text. 
um, and you can replace these photos. So anytime what I'm doing here, you can replace these so they're reusable. That's a great thing about these smart objects. Now I did say I was going to do something else. And so let me finish off with this It's kind of a little fun thing. Rather than having a white background, we could uh, just hit Control J or Command J to copy it. Right click, convert this to a smart object. And I'll show you how to do kind of a screened um, image in here. So let's just choose File Place. And what I did there is, of course, I just double clicked to open the contents of that smart object once again. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really have a picture picked out that I'm going to do for this. So let's just grab one that'll be kind of uh, interesting and fun. I've got these are all my aerial photos. As you can see, I've been very busy and I've shot a lot of them. Um, I'm out there pretty much every day shooting one of these. Um, don't forget, you know, if you want to see them, so follow me on Twitter or Facebook at Photoshop Cafe and I post them every day. I post a new one of these to uh, Twitter. All right, so let's just open this up. I like that one. Let's do this volcanic water one. It's kind of cool. And I'm just going to drag it out a little bit. Uh, close out, hit save. And then here you can see it's super, super strong. So the other thing I could do is drop the opacity down a little bit. You could play around with blend modes and do different things like that too if you wanted. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a layer mask. And then I'm just going to hit the gradient tool, black to white. Make sure we've set that foreground to background linear. And we could just drag in there and notice how we can just blend it. So if we wanted to have the image at the top and not showing at the bottom, we could do it that way. Or you want to go the other way, just drag it that way. So you can see it's kind of a cool little thing. All right, I hope you had a lot of fun. Don't forget, this is just the beginning. I'm just doing a really basic layout here. Um, I really challenge you to go ahead, experiment, try some things, tilt the photos, try different angles. And why don't you add a comment? Let me know uh, some of the things you're trying out, some suggestions of ways to create some cool layouts. Uh, maybe some things that we haven't thought about in here or we didn't really have time to cover. It'd be really great to have a discussion going about what makes a good page layout. Add it in the comments. Let that discussion go. And meanwhile, uh, hit that subscribe button because I've got more tutorials coming. This is just the tip of the iceberg and I would love for you to see them. And uh, if you don't subscribe, then there's no way for you to know I've got new tutorials up. So hit that subscribe button and, uh, and you'll get the new tutorials as soon as I do them. And also, uh, don't forget, hit the like button. Tell your friends about this too. Um, you know, I'm sure your friends would love some of the things we've got going on here with the videos here at Photoshop Cafe. And don't forget to check out PhotoshopCafe.com. We've got a ton of free tutorials there in all kinds of different categories. I know you're going to enjoy it and get a lot out of it. And also follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Photoshop Cafe. Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.